On November the 12th, 2020, General Secretary Xi Jinping visited an art exhibition in commemoration of the 30th anniversary of the development of opening up of Pudong. Pudong Direction determines the path, and path determines the future, as the Chinese people forge ahead on the path of socialism with Chinese characteristics. The Communist Party of China has always led the way, whatever the difficulties. In the middle to late 1980s, with the deepening of opening up and reform, many deep-seated domestic contradictions began to make themselves apparent. Problems with inflation, redundant construction, and economic overheating were just some of the issues that emerged. At the same time, ailments in certain governmental organs and society at large aroused popular disgust in some quarters. Consequently, hostile forces both in China and other countries sought to take advantage of this dissatisfaction to infiltrate and sabotage China's socialist system by sowing division. Through various channels, they engaged in ideological and political infiltration, and in the democratic disguise, they incited attacks on the Communist Party of China and the Chinese government, resulting in a wave of bourgeois liberalization in China. Nurtured by the then international and domestic climate, by spring and summer 1989, a political storm was brewing. With the firm and strong support of Deng Xiaoping and other senior Chinese revolutionaries, the party and the government, backed by the people, took decisive measures to quell the counter-revolutionary riots. By doing so, the socialist regime was safeguarded the fundamental interests of the people were protected, and the continued progress of the reform, opening up, and modernization drive was ensured. In June 1989, the fourth plenary session of the 13th CPC Central Committee was held. Jiang Zemin was elected as General Secretary of the Central Committee. Jiang drew on a poem by Lin Zexu a patriotic Qing high official. I will do whatever it takes to serve my country, even at the cost of my own life, regardless of fortune or misfortune to myself. Faced with a complex situation, the central government went to great lengths to strengthen party building, deepen contact with the people, strengthen the anti-corruption drive, and prosecute major cases. Improvement and rectification work interrupted by the political turmoil was brought back on the agenda. The vegetable basket project was carried on. Inflation brought under control and irrationalities in the circulation of goods was set in order. Prosperity and security are the common aspirations of the Chinese people. Western countries, however, made a big play of the political disturbance in 1989, imposing economic blockade and sanctions on China. In the face of this international pressure, the response of the Chinese communists was clear.
，绝不会放弃社会主义道路和民族独立来换取别人的施舍。So as to tilt the scales and take the initiative, the party and the government actively developed relations with neighboring countries. Cooperation with other developing countries was especially emphasized, while relations with developed Western countries were restored and put on a stable footing so as to create a favorable external environment for reform and opening up. On August 7, 1990, a 14-year-old Tibetan girl lit the first flame at the foot of the Nianchen Tangala Mountains for the 11th Asian Games to be held in Beijing. The 11th Asian Games were the largest international sports meeting hosted by the People's Republic of China in the four decades since its founding. Thirty-seven countries and regions took part, setting a new record for the Asian Games. The success of the 11th Asian Games presented to the world the image of an open, civilized, friendly and confident China. In November 1993, Jiang Zemin was invited to attend the APEC Economic Leaders Meeting. There, he had a formal meeting with the then US President Bill Clinton. Thanks to diligent efforts, China had overcome the external challenges and broken through the sanctions imposed by Western countries. On the first day of the Lunar New Year 1990, snow fell in Beijing. A good omen of the positive turn that China's economy was going to take later that year. In October 1990, Chen Jinhua, then director of the State Commission for Restructuring the Economy, submitted a report to Jiang Zemin that outlined how the understanding of the relationship between the planned and market economy had evolved in Western academia and socialist countries. It concluded that as capitalism used planning, it was permissible for socialism to use markets. Jiang Zemin, he told me about this thing, he told me, 他这个材料我看了，他觉得觉得很好啊。他说这个人能能看出问题，看清楚问题，对这个事情啊，他是很顺利。包括印我们这个材料，他也是想在高层里面做这个统一认识的工作。Debate still continued over whether to retain the fledgling stock exchange, which, despite its origins in the early days of reform, remained a mere pilot operation. The year 1990 marked the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone. After the celebration ceremony, Zheng Liangyu, then mayor of Shenzhen, elaborated on the situation of the Shenzhen stock market and the next step it would take. In December 1990, the Shanghai Stock Exchange officially opened. In July 1991, the Shenzhen Stock Exchange officially opened. The launch of the two exchanges and the introduction of the futures trading mechanism sent a strong signal to the world. China's economic reform would press ahead unswervingly. In early 1990, when Deng Xiaoping returned to Beijing from Shanghai, he asked the CPC leaders to pay extra attention to the development of Pudong in Shanghai 
saying that Shanghai could be the trump card in China's development. As early as 1986, when he was mayor of Shanghai, Jiang Zemin had put forward a plan for the development of Pudong. Jiang Zemin Dong Zi, Ling Da Shang Hai Chang Ri Zong Ti Gui Hua, Ta Dei Qing Ri Jian Shi, Shi Ri Gong Zheng Ah, Fei Rang Zong Shi. Jiu Da Zhu Qiang Diao, Zong Dian Shi Kai Fa Kai Fang Pudong. Ta Shi, Pudong Yi Ding Yao Cheng Wei, Mo Meng Pu Xi De, Jin Yong Mo Yue Zong Xin De. On April 18th, the central government announced the implementation in Pudong of certain policies adopted in economic and technological development zones and some special economic zones. Pudong in Pudong it took less than three months from the proposal to the approval for the development and opening up of Pudong. This was an important CPC Central Committee decision, taken in light of the circumstances internationally and domestically within the context of reform and development. It marked an important step forward in China's reform and opening up drive. As reform and opening up continued, the international situation took a sudden turn. Socialism suffered serious setbacks in Central and Eastern Europe as the Soviet Union disintegrated. Some people in China lacked confidence in the future of socialism doubted reform and opening up, and wavered about the party's basic line. At a critical juncture in the history of the CPC and the country, 88-year-old Dong Xiaoping visited a number of cities in South China and delivered several speeches in the early spring of 1992. As Deng Xiaoping made clear, don't think any planned economy is socialist and any market economy is capitalist. That's not the way things are. In fact, planning and regulation by the market are both means of controlling economic activity, and the market can also serve socialism. In the context of reform and opening up, experiment is to be encouraged. Deng's South Tour speeches, like a strong east wind, blew away the fog of doubt. China's reform and opening up ushered in another bright spring. On June 9, 1992, Jiang Zemin made a speech at a seminar of the party school of the CPC Central Committee for officials at the provincial and ministerial levels. For the first time, he formally put forward the term socialist market economy. In October 1992, the 14th National Congress of the CPC was successfully convened. The Congress stressed the need to seize opportunities, accelerate development and focus on advancing economic development. It determined that the goal of China's economic system reform is to establish a socialist market economic system. It scientifically summarized and evaluated Deng Xiaoping's theory of building socialism with Chinese characteristics and put forward the task of arming the party as a whole with this theory. The development of the market economy under socialism was a great innovation of the Communist Party of China, a major contribution to Marxism and a significant breakthrough in the development of socialism. The reform of state-owned enterprises, the SOEs, held the key to the establishment of a socialist market economy. 
Beginning in 1994, pilot reforms were rolled out at a number of SOEs in an attempt to establish a modern corporate system. They successfully reduced the burden on enterprises by separating their social service functions and reallocating surplus personnel. The reforms also improved supply capacity and people's material well-being. In 1993, food and oil coupons, which were once indispensable features of people's everyday lives, became museum pieces. On February the 19th, 1997, Deng Xiaoping, the chief architect of China's reform, opening up and modernization, passed away. Would the CPC continue along the path of socialism with Chinese characteristics pioneered by Deng? In September, the Grand 15th National Congress of the CPC was held. It was at this Congress that Deng Xiaoping theory was established as a guiding ideology of the CPC and that the party's basic program for the primary stage of socialism was proposed. This clarified the basic economic, political and cultural requirements for building socialism with Chinese characteristics, defining three-step development strategy and determining a series of strategies for China's development in the new millennium. Ruling the country by law has been formally established as the basic strategy for the CPC to lead the people in governing the country. The strategy of rejuvenating the country through science and education was intensified. Great achievements have since been made in this area. Significant progress was made in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Strategy. And the strategy of developing the Western region went into full swing, with a large number of key projects being initiated. As domestic reform advanced, opening up went deeper. Accession to the WTO is an important decision made by the CPC Central Committee. The organization was formally known as the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. It took China 15 years to negotiate the resumption of its place in this organization. The negotiations between China and the United States were particularly complex and difficult. Jiang Zemin stressed three principles for the negotiations. In negotiations, China adhered to the strategy of no rashness and letting nature take its course. On November 10, 1999, China and the United States started the 25th round of negotiation. It was a grueling six days and nights. In this phone call, Xi Guangsheng reported in detail the most critical differences and difficulties in the Sino-American negotiation. On November 15, 1999, China and the United States signed a bilateral agreement on China's entry into the WTO. After the successful negotiations between China and the US, China quickly reached bilateral agreements with other WTO members and successively completed multilateral negotiations. The ministerial conference so agrees 
On December the 11th, 2001, China became the 143rd member of the WTO. China's accession to the WTO gave it a new opportunity to integrate into the global economy and a favorable position to participate in economic rulemaking and competition in globalization. As the year 2001 was drawing to an end, an auspicious snow once again fell on Beijing. And it certainly had been a good year. The first international conference organization permanently located in China, the Bo Ao Forum for Asia, had been founded in Hainan. It was also the year in which the first regional cooperation organization, sponsored by China and named after a Chinese city, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, was born. More excitingly, China's bid to host the 29th Summer Olympic Games succeeded and the 9th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting successfully took place in Shanghai. As a result, China established a new pattern of all-directional and multi-tiered foreign relations. While advancing the cause of socialism with Chinese characteristics into the 21st century, the CPC also united and led the people in addressing various challenges. In the summer of 1998, the worst flood in a century hit the Yangtze River Basin, threatening the cities of Jinzhou, Wuhan, and Zhoujiang. The CPC Central Committee acted decisively and mobilized troops to fight shoulder to shoulder with the people against the flood. After more than two months of arduous endeavor, the army and the people succeeded in keeping the main dike secure and the people safe. The Communist Party of China, with its strong leadership, has withstood every major test in history. For every battle, the Chinese Communists are always the first to step up. On every square inch of China, there are Chinese Communists dedicated to national prosperity and people's happiness. On July 1, 2001, on the occasion of the 80th birthday of the Communist Party of China, Jiang Zemin systematically summarized the CPC's glorious course and basic experience over the past 80 years and comprehensively expounded the scientific significance and basic requirements of the important thought of three represents. Based on Deng Xiaoping theory, the important thought of three represents further answers the questions of what socialism is and how to build it, and provides a creative answer to the question of what kind of party to build and how to build it. At its 16th National Congress, the important thought of three represents, together with Marxism-Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, and Deng Xiaoping theory, was established as the guiding ideology of the Communist Party of China. This was another advancement that chimed with the spirit of the times. On December the 31st, 1999, more than 20,000 people gathered at the China Millennium Monument to welcome in the new millennium. The clock was ringing in a new millennium. 
on the threshold of a new century, the joy of achievement is often felt most keenly. China's GDP exceeded $1 trillion for the first time, and the majority of Chinese people were now living a moderately prosperous life. The Chinese communists with Jiang Zemin as representative in chief withstood a series of severe tests at home and abroad and from Mother Nature, holding the great banner of socialism with Chinese characteristics firmly in hand and brought a vigorous country into the 21st century. Chu Fu Xi, Wei Ye Zheng. 